So Charles, we are here today to help everybody out there understand what unified threat management is, and mo most of all, how can they take it and apply it to their businesses and their everyday life. And that's a great topic. And I think between the two of us, we have about 40 years of experience in security as a whole. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully this will be very helpful to our audience. And I want to start with just stepping back and making a comparison of what unified threat management is. Because really, we went into security from having a firewall to this very complex system that now everybody needs. Yeah, it used to be a lot simpler. Right, and you know what? In our everyday lives, it used to be simpler too. Before, you just had a lock on your door until the bad guys learned how to pick it, and then we had to get deadbolts until they found a way around that, and then there's alarm systems, security cameras, motion sensors, and everything. The list goes on and on, mm -hmm. right? There's nowhere to stop when it comes to security. And with cybersecurity, it's the same thing, but it seems like it grew up so much faster because the threat grew up so much faster. And we went from simple firewalls to now a, a, a huge list of things that we need to deploy. And with that list came unified threat management because there came a time where we need to take it and combine it together as one as a whole and make it simpler for everybody to be able to utilize all these tools. And more importantly, to manage. Absolutely, absolutely. So there uh, seems to be a little bit of a confusion between unified threat management and next-gen firewall. What are the differences there? And, and what does it mean? Is it, is it the same thing? Is it different? Uh, now, I'd like to take a look at things from two perspectives. One is technology, and one is from market. So from a technological perspective, unified threat management is really taking a firewall, as it is a traditional firewall, mm -hmm. and on top of your rules, adding in all the components of unified threat management. Now this list keeps growing and growing. Whereas next-gen firewall, they took, they, they took firewall and said, look, we really don't need firewall anymore. Let's just do away with that, and let's add in five key components, and they list them out. Intrusion prevention, or IPS, application control, web filtering, antivirus, and DLP. Now these are the five key components. Uh, whereas unified threat management, those are still the five key components, but they don't necessarily say that this is what it's made up of. Now from a market perspective, uh, Gartner portrays unified threat manage management to be more of the mid-enterprise type of target market mm -hmm. versus next-gen firewall is more of the larger enterprise type, type target. Uh, but in reality, you know, you're an MSP and, and you probably take it and look at it from a technical perspective and, and, and look at it and say, what, the, what makes the most sense for my customer? Isn't that right? Oh, absolutely. Um, and then you have the ways they operate. Right. right. Yeah, absolutely, which brings me to my next point, right? Mm -hmm. So um, with all of these components, you got to ask yourself, right? There are so many products out there on the market. Are they the same? Are they different? Why, why do they vary in cost so much? I think uh, one of the key things to look at is there's really two camps when it comes to uh, unified threat management or next-gen firewall. The first one is signature-based detection and prevention. And the second is heuristics and anomaly, right? And signature-based is really... Uh, taking and looking at the known threat. What do we know about? Let's create signatures, let's detect it, and let's block it. Versus the other side is what don't we know about? Let's look at all the traffic, create a baseline, and then see what is, doesn't fit that baseline and start detecting and blocking on that. Oh, right. Absolutely. With the uh, speed at which new attacks and zero-day threats uh, are appearing, it seems you know very, very easy to just want to look at well, let's just look for all this new stuff. Let's look at through the heuristics and what we don't know. But you always have to remember the signature base and, and being able to block what is known because those don't go away. Right, right. And, and actually, when it comes to signature based, uh, there, there's a lot of products out there that use a free lists out there on the Internet and you kind of use like a, a group effort to be able to learn the stuff. And there's other ones that have, they deploy teams of people that are out there and researching stuff every day. And you, you got to think, which one is better and are they the same? So uh, my conclusion and really my experience has been when it comes to signature-based, you, you got to look at uh, who is spending the money, who's out there doing the research, who has that threat intelligence available, and that will really show in, in their product set, in their signature set, what really defends against those threats and how quickly they can defend against them. Now, on the heuristic side, it is a little bit different. It's more of the machine learning and the intelligence of the engine. Um, like, 
So I'd like to ask you, do you have uh, any experience or, or, you know, what do you think about the, the actual learning and the, the heuristics base? Uh, what's, what's a good approach or, or what, what can you look at as a differentiator or what's different between the systems out there? Well, really you have to have systems that incorporate both approaches. Um, systems that will give you the baseline protection from what's known and what's historic, um, but also gives you at the right places in processing uh, looking at, at uh, anomalies and, and anomalous type traffic that can lead you to believe that there could be something new. Um, you have to watch out with both. You know, um, If you uh, rely on only heuristics, you're using a lot of processing power to process a lot of known stuff. Right. So if you can actually get products that work in the right places, then you get an advantage of having both environments and not also having to pay for a lot of processing power. That sounds like an excellent approach. And actually, if you can reduce some of the heuristics, you'll also reduce the false positives that they could produce. Oh, absolutely. False the, positives with these types of systems can mean outage of services. Absolutely, yeah. yeah and, and I think that uh, when, when taking and looking at all of these components of security, having them together in a unified threat management makes a lot more sense than having them individually to manage it separately, to be able to inspect separately. It's, it seems like it's a lot of cost and it's a lot of extra effort. Is it, well, you agree as with? MSPs, we've all gone to solution stacks where we've combined all of our managing and monitoring into one platform and keep trying to get to less and less uh, tool sets. Right, which absolutely makes sense for every MSP out there. Mm -hmm. So we've covered unified threat management, how important it is out there. But most importantly, how can an MSP or an IT provider take it out and apply it to all of their customers? Well, we've actually taken the approach that we include security as part of our managed services offering. We don't, we don't put a lot of these things to choice of our clients. It's just when they, when they get our offering, they get a foundational layer of security, uh, which for us includes a UTM firewall um, that allows, them to make, allows us to make sure that they have adequate security and aren't having to make a lot of those decisions. Now, when we add to our solutions stack, we then go back to our existing clients that don't have that yet, and we talk to them about more about we're upgrading our clients to this. When should we schedule you for? And oh, by the way, there's going to be an additional uh, additional fee to your monthly fee for it. Right. You know, it, to me, it, it, as you were saying that, I was thinking it seems almost silly that you would go to your customers who they're relying on you to be the expert and ask their own opinion on such a subject. That's like going to the doctor and, and saying, doctor, I'm sick, and him saying, well, what do you think you should have? You know, um, maybe you should have this or this. Like, mm -hmm. do you, what would you think about a doctor like that? Would you go back to such a doctor? Well, you know, it's interesting with security. Um, there's a lot of fear and uncertainty out there, and a lot of people tr actually try to sell onto that or try to sell the details of the technical features of security products. As MSPs, we're already dealing with people that, you know, you know, our clients who, who usually talking about IT topics is already going to cause, if you get too technical, it's going to cause their eyes to glaze over and them to tune you out. When you get into the, the security world, it ends up sounding too much science fiction. And when people are going to write checks, they don't want to be thinking science fiction. Right. That actually, uh, you know, reminded me of a good story. Uh, when I first got into this market, uh, into the SMB market with security, uh, I actually followed around an IT provider and watched them try to sell security. And the things I heard him say are, I'd like to talk to you about cybersecurity. What do you think about this? I want to show you some options. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at the customer's eyes, he was sitting there and going, like, he went from, okay, I know security is important. We should talk about it, to this sounds like science fiction to me. And do I actually have to pay for this? And who are you? You're supposed to be my guy, but apparently you don't know enough about security because you're asking me. Yeah, well, especially when you start giving too many options. They don't know how to discern what option should be that? They're relying on you to be the experts. That's why they have you managing their stuff in the first place. Right. So would you say a good approach is if you're an MSP, include it as part of your package. If you don't already have it, roll it in there and just tell them, look, we are upgrading our package. We're upgrading everybody. Our new baseline has changed because the threat out there has changed. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that, that is, that's the way we, we approach it. We obviously believe in that. Um, for those that don't want to take it to that level and include so much in their stack and they want to offer it as an optional service, don't get into the technical details or the options of it. Get into the business risk. Right. And talk about what the actual impact to the business really is and how this can help protect that. 
rather than getting into all the scary stuff and and all the features. Right, because that's the thing that the, the customers know about. They know about their business, right? That's right. But they don't know about security, and you should be that expert. And I have actually seen people who, who go in, and IT providers, not MSPs, and they go in there to sell security, and they just come in and say, look, we're upgrading all of our customers to a new advanced, the new baseline of cybersecurity, and can we get you upgraded this weekend? And they don't really give them an option. They just tell them, look, the sooner we do it, the better, because everybody's doing this. And they have been extremely successful. Yeah, that's a, a great approach. Excellent. Thank you very much, Charles. All right. Thank you, Andrew.